this is I Didn't Know Where Else To Go by Atia underscore Black Charm, read by Satori Reed. Summary, 4.23 p.m. This is the time when Aizawa Shota sees his student Midoriya Izuku break. TLDR, Izuku goes to school even though his mom died that morning. 4.15 a.m. This is the time on the stove clone that Izuku sees after the paramedics finally left. That's 25 minutes after Izuku had gone to check where his mom's light was still on so early in the morning. He had thought she had gone to bed a while ago. That's 24 minutes after he stood stock still after his mom didn't react to him talking to her. 24 minutes after he touched her shoulder and flashed back with how cold she was. It was 20 minutes after he finally decided to call the emergency line and tell them that he found his mother dead in her bed and they said the paramedics were on their way. It was almost odd how empty he felt after the phone call, how with unusual steady hands he put his mother's hand to rest on her lap and made sure her eyes were closed and that her hair wasn't too messy. She never liked having messy hair. He had smiled sadly before giving a soft kiss to her forehead and then waiting for someone to knock on his door. He watched them enter silently, giving him sad looks and asking where she was. He led them to her room and asked them to be gentle, and they were. They were oddly quiet and their actions seemed graceful as they took her away. He was grateful for that. And just before they left, they asked if he had someone and would be alright. He politely smiled at them and assured them he'd be fine. And he would, he should, because Midori Inko taught her son well. He could take care of himself. Then they left, the door closing behind them at 4.15am. A whole 25 minutes for Izuku to find his mom dead and have her be taken away. A whole 25 minutes where he was lost with her until he was irrevocably alone. He was alone. 6.30 a.m. There was a time on his phone when his alarm went off and he finally got up from his seat on the couch. That was when he started to get ready for school. On autopilot, he got dressed, brushed his teeth and put on his shoes. He paused though, in front of the mirror, the tie still hanging around his neck untied. His mom had taken to tying it for him after he asked her to, since Uraraka kept teasing him about it. He remembered the approving look Ida sent him, the first day he had come to class with it properly tied, thanks to his mom. He leaves the house with a poorly tied cloth around his neck. It felt heavy. He's too early at the train station, but still gets on. He'll have to apologize to Sarah, who he usually sees on the train in the morning. He liked talking to him in the morning. There aren't a lot of people on campus around 7.05 a.m. He's grateful for that, he thinks. It's easy to let the sound of the footfalls be the only thing to hear in the empty hallway, even more so when he opens the empty classroom. The sound of him opening the zipper of his book bag is so loud, and so is the ruffling of pages as he opens the notebook to a note page. He puts headphones in his ear, but doesn't play the podcast he wanted to listen to. No, he just lets it muffle the silence. Shinsa was always the first one in class, much to Ida's displeasure. It did help to be living on campus with his family, and that his two fathers made sure he woke up with enough time to prepare for the day. So it was surprising to see someone else sitting at their desk when he walked in, especially since he wasn't greeted by a smile and wave first thing like usual. Instead, Midoriya didn't spare him a glance, his head still face down leaning on an arm that blocked him from view. It looked like he had headphones in, and when Shinso passed by him, he saw that Midoriya had his notebook open. Although, it was odd that there wasn't anything written on it, and that he didn't hear Midoriya write anything else as the hour went by and people started slowly arriving for homeroom. 8.25am. That was the exact time that Aizawa-sensei entered the room and silence overtook the classroom like every morning. And if you looked carefully enough, you could see the pleased uptake of the man's house. He spoke to them about the exercise they would do that day, and any upcoming events. It seemed that this upcoming week would be relatively normal. Aizawa noticed how Izuku didn't show any reaction to the exercise they would be doing. The kid usually had some sort of excitement and a quiet mumbling about how to use or not use your quirk in that situation, but as he looked, the young teen was simply silent. 10.40 a.m. That's when third period started and they headed to one of the training gyms. They would be there for the fourth period as well. Usually, the boys were used to hearing mumblings come from Izuku as they changed into their uniforms, but this time it was just an odd silence. Although he did look particularly focused on his costume. 
Maybe he was thinking about improvement? Izuku was too busy thinking how his hero costume's design was originally created by him and his mother. She had even made the first physical version of it. He wished that it hadn't been burned in that first battle simulation exercise. Everyone noticed how Izuku took down the robots with brutal quick efficiency. There was no smile on his face. 12.30pm is the time on the clock in the cafeteria wall when Izuku realized that he didn't have lunch. Usually, his mom prepared him one in the morning, even when he insisted that she didn't have to. But she always told him she liked to make him something nice to eat when he was at school. Once, she told him that it made her feel like she would be with him, just for a little bit, while he ate at school with his friends. She had smiled a bit shyly when she told him that. 2.45pm. That's when he smiled and said he was fine to Shoji, who looked concerned. The boy ruffled his hair and told him that they were there for him if he needed. She always gently brushed her fingers through his hair when he had been sick and died. She always looked at him with a gentle smile when she'd kiss his forehead before stroking his hair until he fell asleep. 3.20pm. This is the time that he made sure to have out his notebook and good pen since he took so many notes in that class. Usually, he was careful about not writing too much or too fast, since there was still sometimes pain in his hand, but he had been managing the pain fine. His mom used to massage his hands for him while they sat on the couch and watched the show after long days. Even when she stopped, she still held his hand. Her hands were always soft and warm. Izuku went to the pain when his hand spasmed from being clenched too tightly and he dropped his pencil. The sight of broken lead on the floor made his gut twist. 4.10 p.m. That's when class ended and everyone packed up and got ready to leave. A few of the others sent Izuku worrying looks, but he waved them off. One of them walked up to him and asked if he was okay. He said he would be fine. He packed up his bag and got up from his desk, but once everyone was gone, except for Aizawa sensei, he stopped. He stopped in the middle of the room and he simply froze. He can't bring himself to move. Izuku knew he was supposed to go home now. School had ended and he needed to go home, but there was no one waiting for him at home. No one to greet him as soon as he opened the door and asked how his day was. No one to give him a quick kiss on the cheek and tell him to get ready to help her cook dinner. No one that smiled at him so softly as he ranted about what cool thing one of his friends did in the school. There's no one because that one person died. They died. Midoriya, what's wrong? Izuku looks up to see that his sensei is standing right in front of him with a concerned look on his face. Izuku doesn't know when Aizawa sensei got out from his desk. He doesn't know how long he was standing there, frozen. I didn't know where else to go, sensei. Izuku found himself saying. He saw Aizawa sensei for his eyebrows. Right, he doesn't know. My mom died this morning and I didn't know where else to go except here. The words ring out loudly in the empty classroom. I'm so sorry, Midoriya. And it's when Izuku hears those words spoken to him so softly in his teacher's usual rough voice that he suddenly feels everything. 4.23pm. That's the time when Aizawa Shota sees his student Midoriya Izuku break. That's the time when he sees tears silently stream down his freckled cheeks as his face twisted into one pain of agony. My mom's dead. She's dead, he said and gasped for breath like he was dread. Then... Once he got enough air, he wailed. Aizawa was there to catch him as they fell when their legs seemed to lose all strength. He's there to support a wailing child's body as small hands come to grasp at his jumpsuit and held on tight, a grip that surely must have been painful. In an empty classroom with only two people, a child cried for the loss of his mother. She's dead, she's dead, she's dead, she's dead, Izuku repeated and he sounded like he could barely breathe as he whispered those words out and twisted on fabric within his grip. Then he seemed to choke on air, and he mouthed the words, while no sound came out. Izuku's eyes were screwed shut, as his head shook, no, as if he couldn't accept it, while his body hunched over itself, like someone was twisting his heart in his chest, someone else. All Aizawa could do was hold him. So that was I Didn't Know Where Else To Go by Atya underscore Black Charm. I hope you liked it. The links are in the description, and bye-bye.